Hi there, and welcome to the Cool Flowers Virtual Book Study, Week 9. We're almost to the end, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us here each week as we are connecting the dots on how everybody can grow these great spring bloomers. I call the forgotten flowers um, in our gardens, no matter where you live, because as you've learned by now, it's all about timing when you plant them in the garden. So we're storming into week nine, which is, and now the rewards. But before we get into that, be sure to check out um, down below this video. Um, there's several things you can sign up to have your email, an email dropped in your box each week as soon as it goes live, as well as there's a place that lists all the vendors where you can pick up your copy of Cool Flowers if you haven't already done that. And also there's a place for comments and please keep the comments coming. Um, I enjoy answering them. And if you have a question, you can be sure there's somebody else that has that same question. So keep the comments coming. And I also want to invite you to be sure to like us on Facebook. It's um, our Facebook, the link is actually on our website, but it's um, Gardener's Workshop Farm. and you know, we're posting information about what's going on on the farm day to day there, as well as look for some perhaps live um, events in the garden about cool flowers. Um, please also follow me on Instagram. Again, it's Gardener's Workshop Farm is my handle there. And um, we enjoy posting photographs of all the pretty things and crazy things and all the creatures here on our farm. Um, so we appreciate all that interaction. So before we jump into to chapter nine, I just want to read you um, a paragraph. I'm looking at page 118, and it's talking about how we're being reunited with this group of flowers. The old gardening practice of planting hardy annuals in cool temperatures is being rekindled. This is going to reunite, re can you tell it's early in the morning, excuse me. This is going to reunite gardeners with some of the greatest flowers to be grown in a garden. Many, like me, who garden in the middle to the lower regions of the United States will have success with these flowers for the first time. Spring will never be the same. And this is all about that this group of flowers, you know, I think of Bells of Ireland and Sweet Peas, which are just two flowers that so many of us covet to grow and we see pictures in magazines and in books and think oh I wished I lived in a place where I could grow them well guess what you do live in a place you can grow them because it's all about our timing I thought I could never have these lovely spring flowers group blooming in my garden in the spring and um, I hope that you've gotten that that's the main objective of this book is to deliver. It's all about timing. Even many very seasoned gardeners and growers are discovering something new about gardening, that they can grow almost anything in their garden when you figure out the right time to plant it. And that's what Cool Flowers is all about, this wonderful group of spring bloomers. So first thing I want to talk about is sharing the flowers. Um, I will tell you that even after, let's see, it's been 18 years that I've been delivering flowers to commercial customers. And I will tell you that even now, still, on deliveries every week during the season, I have customers that come out to my truck as soon as I arrive to see what's in there. People just love the beauty, the freshness, the surprise, and most of all, the fact that somebody grew them locally. They know the person that grew them. And it just makes something really special about all that. They're envious, they covet it, they love it, they want to do it themselves. And um, so there's a real special meaning to flowers that you grow. And that brings me to sharing your flowers with friends and people that maybe need a lift. Um, they're having bad time, they're sick, or um, they're just having a, a, you know, a pretty puny day. Sharing flowers that you grew in a bouquet with another person does 
what no other gift does. Um, there's certainly a lot to be said for stopping at a, um, at a florist and picking up a bunch of flowers or picking them up in your grocery store when you're in there and gifting someone. That is certainly um, a good thing to do. However, when you harvest flowers from your garden and share them with somebody, whether you drop it off on their porch or take it to a party um, as a hostess gift, let me tell you, you start giving bouquets as hostess gifts, you will be on every party list um, and you will be the sought after friend because people are just mesmerized and um, they, they look at the flowers and just can't believe that you, um, that you grew them. More so, you brought them to them. And I'll tell you a short little story um, about our garden with purpose. And for those of you that have cool flowers, that have, I'm not going to go through the actual story of, about how we came to do this. Of When I um, found out I had breast cancer, I guess it's been 10 or 11 years ago. And Suzanne and I started dropping bouquets off on porches of some friends that were going through treatment. Um, that was before I knew I had cancer. And then um, we would drop off these bouquets on these gals' porches that were going through treatments. And their reaction to these flowers just really struck a chord with us. I mean, they would gaze at those flowers all day long and they wouldn't just look at them as beautiful flowers. They thought about, oh my goodness, they grew these flowers. They're out in the garden with these flowers right now. Um, and it just had such deep meaning. Um, so it really became a real labor of love for us um, to do that. And out of that grew um, a seed collection that we offer. Um, it's pink for breast cancer. Um, which we really feel like we have a couple of pink seed collections, a warm season and a cool season. Uh, we feel like growing a pink garden and sharing pink flowers really gives you opportunity to share, you know, the whole message of early detection and all those things that we should all be readily sharing in all cancers. Um, but the pink seed collection is an all plant the seed straight in the garden, fall and early spring, um, and then for you to be able to harvest that garden and share it with people, um, it just touches people. I mean, everybody has somebody in their life that has had, had, has had breast cancer. Because if you didn't, guess what you do now because you have me, right? So it just really helps to spread the, the, the hope and encouragement um, and the importance of early detection. So um, that's kind of a warm, fuzzy part of growing cool flowers and growing a pink garden. So here is the greatest benefit um, of growing this garden that you may not have considered and it may be actually part of the reason that we have so few bees in our garden um, and that some folks just have trouble getting beneficial insects in in time to take care of summertime um, pest issues cool flowers bloom earlier in the season than any other flower. By having blooms present in your garden early in the season brings those suspects, we'll call them, good bugs and pollinators, into your garden earlier. They're starving for a food and habitat at that time of year. I mean, if you think about what's going on for us, we're, think, we're talking, um, you know, April, the end of April is when our garden beyond cool flowers starts to get going. Actually, it's more like May. So now with cool flowers, the end of March, we have bachelor buttons and pot marigolds, better known as calendula, getting started. And then in April, all the cool flowers are starting to bud up. Um, and starting to produce blooms. Well, our garden is so loaded with bees, particularly native bees, who are starving. Because, you know, they used to rely on dandelions. That was a huge source of food um, for them. Well, what are people doing with dandelions now? They are not allowing them to, to show up in their lawns. So they're struggling at that time of the year. So by having cool flowers in your garden, and I would recommend that every garden landscape whether you have a flower garden or not everybody should have a small patch of bachelor buttons um, that will provide habitat 
and food um, for early. I mean, I think of the wasps, which I know freak out people. I used to be totally terrified of wasps. They're huge, good bug, bad bug eaters. They're good bugs. They eat bad bugs. Caterpillars being a huge source of food for them. So you want them in your garden and they will really leave you alone if you just kind of watch your ways. Um, so by having these blooms present and the vegetation, which bachelor buttons and calendula, their foliage excretes nectar. So even before they're blooming, they're providing for this, these bugs. By having these plants and blooms in your garden early, you bring these bugs weeks and weeks and weeks earlier than you normally would have, which means they set up housekeeping, they start having babies, they're laying eggs, and you have this whole community of good bugs set up long before you otherwise would. Um, so it's another benefit. You're also going to attract lots of great birds. Did you know, I didn't know this until I researched cool flowers, that hummingbirds eat aphids? And having flowers and plants earlier in your garden, obviously you'll have some aphids. We always have a few aphids. And we're happy to have aphids now because we want to pr provide food sources for hummers. Wrens, another precious little bird that we all love hearing and seeing their perky little tails around our gardens. They typically have large broods of babies. They hunt for insects 24 hours a day. I mean, they are so about, that's why you always see them looking so alert. They're always looking for food because they've got a very hungry um, brood of babies waiting for them. Um, and birds. The birds in your garden will just, just birds in general, will eat so many insects. I think I read somewhere, and this may or may not be right, but I'm thinking it is. A chickadee that's feeding um, a brood of babies will eat thousands, will collect thousands of insects in a week to feed their babies. Think about that. You just need a couple chickadees. Well, the way you can draw these birds to your garden in addition to having these blooms present is water. Um, having an upside down trash can lid. You don't have to have fancy bird baths, although they're pretty. Um, you can have these trash can lids in your garden and having them on ground level means other animals, frogs, lizards, um, <clears throat> butterflies, all kinds of other um, creatures can also utilize that. So rolling out the red carpet really helps you to reap the rewards um, by bringing in the wildlife and the creatures um, to partake in your garden. You're going to have better insect control. You're going to enjoy seeing them. You're going to have flowers to share with your friends. And um, I mean, the rewards will just, you'll just reap the rewards. Um, so I hope that these um, tips will encourage you and help you to kind of continue to find your way with cool flowers. Um, next week, week 10, is let, getting the most and letting go of your garden. It's going to tell you when to cut the cord, when to end the flowers and move on to the next season. Um, please um, continue to, to share our book study on Facebook. You know, like us on Facebook um, and share our page on Facebook with your friends. Check us out on Instagram. And um, we really appreciate you being here with us. And if you haven't already done it, pick up your copy of Cool Flowers. Um, we're getting ready to go to a second printing, I'm so happy to say, and um, our publisher is pleased about that, and we appreciate all your support, and we'll see you right here next week for week 10, which is the last week. However, we're going to have a wrap-up at the end, so be sure to post your comments. I need to have something to talk about, right, in that wrap-up um, video. So thank you so much. See you next time.